The National Baseball Hall of Fame elected its first five players in 1936. The museum officially opened its doors on June 12, 1939, in Cooperstown, New York. The dedication of the National Baseball Museum and the Baseball Hall of Fame. As of 2016, 312 members have been elected into the hall. A Columbus, Indiana postal clerk named Joseph Kennedy set out to collect signatures from all the living player members of the Hall of Fame in 1938 on a first day cover commemorating the 100th anniversary of the game of baseball. Those 11 immortals included Connie Mack, Cy Young, Ty Cobb, Larry Lajoie, Tris Speaker, Honus Wagner, Walter Johnson, Eddie Collins, George Sizzler, Grover Cleveland Alexander, and the Sultan of Swat, Mr. Babe Ruth. Joseph Kennedy reached out to these players as he thought it would make a great souvenir for his then eight and a half pound, two week old grandson. My name is Joe Griffin and I'm uh, the uh, eight and a half pound grandson that my grandfather uh, wrote to Cy Young two weeks after I was born in 1938. And Cy Young responded uh, with my grandfather's request, and my grandfather had also asked him what his, what Cy Young thought his biggest thrill was. He wrote on the back of the letter uh, his uh, no-hitters and his perfect game and his 20-inning game against another Hall of Famer, uh, Rube Waddell. It amazes me today you have pitchers who are looking for relief at, in the fifth inning, and uh, Cy Young went, 20 innings by himself. He was very, very much a baseball fan all his life. He took me to the, the first baseball, uh, major league ball game I ever saw. Uh, Columbus, Indiana is not that far from Cincinnati, Ohio. He took me down there. I was probably 12 or 13. We saw the Cincinnati Reds play the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Stan Musial was playing, and I remember uh, significantly, the significant thing about the game, I can't tell you who won, but Stan Musial hit a high fly, pop fly, and when it hit the ground, the center fielder, the second baseman, the shortstop were all within three feet of it, and Stan Musial was standing on second base, and my grandfather said, you always run them out. And uh, I have told this, that story many times, that uh, if you don't, if maybe it's going to be an easy out, maybe it's not. You do what the best you can, and if it's uh, misplayed, you're going to do well. I was not aware of the uh, things that he had done for me, um, right after I was born. It was something that I didn't know I had until May of 2009 when my sister called and asked me if I had anything from our grandfather, and I did, but I had never looked through it. Our mother had given it to me nine years before. She had given me the this stack and just saying that grandfather thought it would be something you might might want. And I took good care of it. I put it in a box and put it in the corner of the closet <clears throat> and it sat there for about nine years. What my sister described was something that had to do with baseball or the or significant baseball players. That week I went through the 
found the stuff, and I found two letters, a letter to Cy Young and a letter to Babe Ruth and a cover that had on the back of it the 11 autographs of the living player members of the Hall of Fame at that time. The first nine autographs he had within 60 days. And this was all snail mail. Grover Cleveland Alexander was one of the most difficult to, to find a good address for. There was an article in the paper that said that uh, Grover Cleveland Alexander was going to be working for a fellow he had met when they were rookies in baseball. So my grandfather sent the card or the cover. At that time, it had nine autographs on it to this gentleman. And when he received it, he turned it or he wrote my grandfather and said he had received it and that he uh, would see Alex and about Alex would be there in about two weeks and he would sign it and we'd send and they would send it back to my grandfather. And he said, until Alex gets here and we do that, it's in my safe. So he recognized that this was an unusual item at that time. And the Alexander, they did that. And then my grandfather had 10 autographs. And a short time, well, relatively short time, about probably within a year later, he, there was an article in the newspaper uh, having to do with Babe Ruth. He apparently had been ill and he was now better. And it gave my grandfather uh, an opening to find, to get his address. And he wrote him and uh, asked him to be the final signature on the, on the first day cover. And he also asked him if what the biggest thrill in baseball that he'd had. And he said on the, on the back of, his, of the letter my grandfather wrote to him that the one I hit in Chicago, and that was the one where he pointed to the bleachers and then he hit the ball to the bleachers. And uh, uh, that was, I thought it was nice that my, when I saw that, that we, now we know how, what the babe really thought. When I went through and, and found the things I had, the, the Cy Young letter, the Babe Ruth letter, and, and the the, uh, uh, the first day covers, and the one with the autographs on it, brought back a lot of memories. And uh, had tears in my eyes a couple of times in thinking about the things with, with Grandfather. And when I told my sister, she had the same kind of reaction uh, that we we realized that what we that with this was really something our grandfather had had done a whole lot of memories a whole lot of memories yeah. and uh, but he was a he was quite a guy